Welcome to Zimmerman Podcast, episode 43. Today, I'm welcoming my brand expert and website designer, Catherine Joachim, back to the podcast. If you missed Catherine's first appearance on Zimmerman Podcast, go back and listen to episode 41. It's branding gold. I can't wait to have Catherine on Zimmerman Podcast for four mini episodes where she's going to share her branding genius with us, both big picture ideas and detailed tips. Today, Catherine and I are talking about how color can help communicate a specific brand story, and we're sharing about the Zimmerman brand colors as an example. Catherine is so kind and insightful. I'm beyond thankful that I can share her with all of you today. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Welcome to the Zimmerman Podcast with your host, CEO, wedding professional, educator, and mom, Jessica Zimmerman. In just two years, Jessica went from facing bankruptcy to taking home a six-figure salary. She turned a business-saving $100,000 loan into a million-dollar empire. As a creative entrepreneur, a healthy work-life balance seems just as unattainable as a six-figure income. But Jessica Zimmerman is here to show you it's possible. With the right tools and insider tips and some hard work, your craziest dreams can become your daily routine. If you set some boundaries and commit to healthy changes, you can create a business and a life you love. So let's make your business work for you. Thanks for coming back to the podcast, Catherine. I cannot wait to talk about today's topic, how to brand your business with color. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be back, Jessica. This is going to be good. Okay, so brand color is really important. There are so many brands we can recognize just by their colors. And I know when we were going through the Zimmerman rebrand, the color story was such a huge part of the process. So just to give a concrete example before we move into more all-encompassing color tips, let's talk a little bit about the Zimmerman color story. So if you've seen any of our websites, courses, et cetera, then you, you know our colors. Catherine, can you tell everyone what design story inspired the colors for the Zimmerman rebrand? So it really was revealed in the mood boarding process. So how I worked with Jessica and really how I work with all of our clients is we actually only put images in the mood board that the client has been inspired by and curated themselves. So I actually don't try to go look up images that I think they're going to love and it will inspire them. What I find is that's not going to deliver an authentic process for the client. I want to reflect back to them in an edited down way. Here's a crystallized look at all these images that have inspired you. So I really narrow it down a lot to just a few key images. And then that's where we really pull the color palette out of because the mood board has already been put together with the parameters um, by myself and Rebecca, my designer, that, okay, what is this emotion that this is evoking? How does this feel? What are the textures that are in this mood board? What are the colors? We really try to have a... A curated color palette within the mood board already. So we want it to feel very cohesive and color is a big part of that. So that's how we approach the mood board. And then we actually take that mood board right into Photoshop and we use the color selection tool and that's where we pull out actual different shades. But obviously then we go through and assess like, okay, what's really going to be the most powerful and impactful color for this brand? So Jessica, when you came to me, you really had a strong idea about the color direction. I remember you actually saying something that cracked me up at the time because you were like, I love black. Like I wear black all the time. I hope that doesn't bore you. Like You were so worried. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, this is a dream project. I was so excited. Oh my gosh. That doesn't surprise me one bit. No, but I, I think one of the questions that you gave me that was super helpful for me because at the time that's all I want I was like black and white that's it that's all I want black and white and you were like okay well um why don't you just start gathering pictures of what your ideal client would wear and that was super helpful because I thought about I just start I just looked on Pinterest and I I think I just searched in Pinterest fashion and then I just started pinning things that really that I liked. Um, but also that I like, yeah, if, if I saw this girl in this like super sleek 
tan suit with black heels and a black leather jacket, I would be like, yeah, you're my client because you, you've got somewhere to go. You're not going to be so, you're not going to be into every single detail of your wedding. You're going to let me do the work because you got, you got some, somewhere else to be. You, you're, you've got a busy life. You've got things going on. And I started to, there, there was this pattern of just kind of more, uh, tailored, suits and and uh but also mixed with like leather jackets and motorcycle boots but also like black heels and and I don't know crisp white shirts and somehow by just kind of pinning these fashion images you you took that I didn't I didn't really know what you were doing you just asked me to pin that and I was like why does she care about what this person's wearing like who cares they can wear whatever <laughs> they want <laughs> then, once I had pinned like 16 images, I looked at it and I go, oh, I see what she's doing. Okay. Okay. There we go. There's our color palette. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you pick up so much more than just the color from, from that exercise, but that was super, super helpful for me. Yeah. And you know, it really takes a lot of the stress out of picking colors. If you are doing your branding yourself at the stage you're at, or maybe you just want to take kind of a self look at your own website and be like, does this really align? If you go through an exercise, like what is my ideal client where it's going to help you get out of your head and into the right perspective for your business, more a strategic mindset versus just like, oh, okay, I think these are the arbitrary colors I need. You may realize after self-reflecting and looking at kind of some fun exercises that, oh, wait a second, this doesn't align. And then you can easily fix it, but you'll get clarity out of doing that. Want to know the first step to booking more clients? You've got to have a website and not just any website, but a site built to book. If you're just starting your business, you're probably wondering how you can share about your work gain clients, and start making money? The answer to all of these things is your website. When I first started my business, I didn't have the money to pay a professional brand expert to create the brand you see here today, but I didn't have to. I used the resources I had to invest in my business and create a brand that would attract the type of client I wanted to work with, supported by a website that was built to transform searching brides into lifelong clients. If you want a simple guide to how to create a site that books without having to invest thousands in a branding expert before you're ready, you need a winning website. To learn more, go to ZimmermanPodcast.com slash website. That's ZimmermanPodcast.com slash website. And you could totally see how someone like Emily Lay, who owns the, the company Simplified, I use her planner every year, but that her branding could not be further from my branding, mm-hmm. but it is totally her audience. And it is, it is, it represents not just her, but the, but her audience and everything. I mean, I, I, every year I just want to beg her for a black planner and I always get the simplest one that they have because I love the, the content inside it. But I mean, her audience is mainly, you know, rainbow and bright and flowers and just, you know, all these different bold patterns and these bright colors. And you can see that represented, you know, in her brand, in her feed, in her newsletters, in her product itself. And I think about that exercise, if she were doing it, how her Pinterest board of what do her clients wear would be, you know, it would look a lot like Charlotte from Sex and the City Mm -hmm. and very preppy and everything, but then also a lot of color. Mm -hmm. and how helpful that exercise is. Yeah. You know, branding is, I think a lot of times people talk about it like it's some big mysterious thing, but when you break it down into these exercises, it is just so helpful. And this isn't rocket science. You can do this. Is there like a color quota? Like, should there, should, should we not go over three colors? Like what's your kind of guidelines for, for picking out colors? So I definitely am a fan of more limited color palettes, and those could be shades of the same, shades or tints of the same Pantone color. So yeah, maybe there's more than three colors, quote unquote, but it's it's still a limited palette. And the reason for that is you have to think about color as directing attention. So when you're using color on your logo or on your website or in a PDF, 
you need to think about, okay, where are you directing eyeballs? And if you start using a ton of different colors, if you don't do it in a really intentional way, you can definitely have a super colorful palette and it can be very effective. But unless you're really intentional with it, you're going to make eyes kind of bounce around a page when really maybe you want to direct them to look at your actual product or look at your actual portfolio work. So you always want to make sure that your brand frames up and supports your work versus distracting from it. And this does not mean you need to have a neutral brand. Like I said, you can definitely do a lot of color, but you just need to do it in a way that the frame does not take away from the actual painting within it. You wouldn't go to a museum and see a frame that is so loud, so gaudy that you can't even like see the picture within it. And same thing with your brand and the colors you pick. That's why I would say if you're just doing this yourself, maybe just stick to two colors and then keep your um, your font colors all in like a dark gray or a black, just so it's super legible. A lot of times I see people try to get creative with their headline colors. I'm not saying you can't do that, but if you want to make sure you're on the safe side, if you are not as familiar with the side of the art world, then I would say just stick to a really legible color, like something you would read in a book or a magazine is a good rule of thumb. Did you know that I have a course that tells you everything you need to know about marketing on Pinterest? From the wedding industry to online education to launching my memoir, Pinterest is my number one marketing strategy. Why? With Pinterest, I can share visual content that links directly to my website with a single click. And these pins don't get lost in a news feed or hidden by an algorithm. They get pinned and repinned for years and I get inquiries today from pins I created months ago. If you're a wedding professional, newsflash, brides are already hanging out on Pinterest. Stop using Pinterest just for inspiration and start booking your dream brides using Pinterest. If you need a Pinterest plan that is uncomplicated and easy to understand, you need my course, The Power of Pinning, taught by me and my personal Pinterest manager. Check it out at ZimmermanPodcast.com slash Pinterest. That's ZimmermanPodcast.com slash Pinterest. And I think, too, and we're going to talk about how you pick out fonts on the next episode, but once you have these things, once you have the color, and at some point you just have to make a decision. You know, if you're doing this on your own right now, you just have to make a decision. You got to give yourself a deadline and make a decision. And so you can move forward. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably the hardest part about being an entrepreneur or when you're trying to do these things yourself on a budget and all of that is you, you second guess it. There's no one there to say, yes, that's good. But give yourself a deadline. Say, I actually have to have these colors picked out by this date so that you, you get it done and you move forward because you're never going to progress if you don't make decisions. That's the biggest part of entrepreneurship and moving the needle in your business is making decisions. Is it always going to be the right one? No, but you guess, guess what? You're going to figure out that it's not the right one eventually, and you can change it if you need to. You know what I mean? It's, it, and I'm just talking about business in general, not necessarily just color decisions. But once you have made those decisions, it makes it super easy if you think about everything that you do with your business. The way we market now, it's so simple. We know the colors. We know the fonts. So whatever it is that we have to say, whether it's a promotion about the book or letting people know a new podcast episode dropped or, hey, we were featured in in this or look at this new blog we wrote, we know that we're going to use these colors and these fonts. It just makes it so simple to to do that. I think it's really, really, really helpful. And I want to say one more thing about color. And you'll remember this because this happened last year. So we do some online ads. We do Facebook ads and some Instagram ads. And we noticed we weren't getting as many clicks as we were when we first started doing the ads. And the person who was helping me with the ads suggested, because my color palette is so neutral, she suggested that we incorporate another color. And at first I was like, no, 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 no. Like, we're not doing that. Like, I don't, I don't like any other color. Colors. We were going to use black, white, and tan. That's it. And um, and she said, "Listen, it doesn't mean that it's for." And I actually, I actually called you and had this conversation. You said, "No, I think that's smart 
you said, it, I don't, it, that doesn't mean that you have to now incorporate that color doesn't have to now be on your brand board and have to be on your website and have to be on all of that. But I do think that you have to kind of be flexible in business and go, well, let's try that. Let's try a, a, a bolder color and see if that starts attracting more traffic. And so I asked you to pick that out. You picked out a, how would you, how would you describe that? Like a mauve corally, ma- I don't know. Yeah, it was this beautiful hue that was actually in a lot of your work. So from a branding perspective, I was like, yeah, th- this isn't going to clash. This is already really in line with what you guys are putting out there. Yeah, it's not on the brand board, but this is going to align with your overall visual impression. But it's, I think going back to Jessica's point about being able to change things, why would you work for yourself or decide to create your own thing if you can't test something, if you can't adapt, if you can't change it? So there's definitely space for you to grow and evolve. Absolutely. Okay, good. Well, there is, is there anything else we should know about color? I think just with your logo, keep in mind that you just probably want to do one color. Don't get too many colors in there. That's going to be better for printing applications and memorability. And just remember that the color you pick for your logo, that's going to make it 80% more memorable. So really the color of the logo is a big part of the impression that you're making. And I guess one final thing I would just say is color psychology is like really trendy to talk about, but keep in mind that your brand is not a caricature and there's a lot more nuance to your brand than just purely saying red is a power or a passion color or yellow is happy or pink is girly. There's all these different vast complex shades and hues with each, you know, within each category. So I would encourage you to do some reflecting about okay, let me not make a caricature brand, but what do I really want to leave people with? Like your brand is what people think about you when you're not in the room. I think Jeff Bezos of Amazon said that, but I'm probably butchering that quote. But with color, you know, what do you want people to be remembering and perceiving about your business? And you can get really nuanced with that. So look through different shades, have fun with it, but it's such a powerful thing for your brand and it's really accessible too. So good. Okay, guys, if you haven't already, we have a past episode with Catherine that you need to check out. We're going to have two additional ones. It's part of this four-part mini series where we're talking all about branding. Catherine, tell everybody real quick where they can find you. You can find me at Crim Brands on Instagram or crimbrands.com. Perfect. Okay, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Zimmerman Podcast. Make sure you listen to all the episodes in this mini series with my branding expert and friend, Catherine Jo Wakeham of Cram Brands. In the next few weeks, we're going to talk about tricks behind branding with font and questions you can ask yourself to find brand clarity. And remember, we are just a few short weeks away from the launch of my memoir, Sleeping with a Stranger. If you love listening to this podcast, you've got to get the audiobook. It's narrated by yours truly and will be available May 1st. So mark your calendars. I'll see you next time on Zimmerman Podcast. If you loved what you heard today, even if you liked it a lot, you should subscribe and leave a review. We'll see you back here next time in the Zimmerman Podcast.